Hey, what's going on, YouTube? This is CJ. It's time to give you guys another quick update on the reef tank. You know, let's try to remind you guys, you know, always enjoy the good days in the hobby when you have them. You know, document it, soak it in, because, <laughs> you know, it's not guaranteed to last. And that's pretty much where I'm at today. You know, I just got home this morning. It's time to do a water change and maintenance. And I figured this was a perfect time to record and kind of share what's going on with my tank with you guys. So let's go ahead and get to it. So I'm really going to focus on two different types of algae this update for you guys. And the first one being bubble algae. Now I've been pretty damn lucky over my time in the hobby. I say the last two and a half years, never had this stuff in my tank that I can remember, especially to the level that, you know, I felt like I had to manually get in there and remove it, you know, do something to kind of help it out. As you can tell, brand coral is the only place it's really growing, but you know, it's got some sizable pieces on there. So I'm going to share with you guys my plan on getting that out of my tank here a little later. But this is just the first algae. Let's move on to algae number two. So let's go ahead and get to the bad news. Now I know some of you guys may be wondering, you know, what do you mean bad news? You know, bubble algae is pretty bad, right? I mean, it is to a degree. You definitely want to, you know, keep it from spreading throughout your tank. But believe me, in this hobby, there are levels of bad. And this stuff here is what I call the next level. I don't know if it's the top, but I definitely consider this the boogeyman of a lot of people's reef tanks, at least from what I've heard and researched. And for those who haven't figured it out yet, this is called Bryopsis algae. It's definitely one of the worst nuisance algae that you can actually have in your reef tank. And we're gonna take a second and talk about it. And I'm gonna kind of share how I'm gonna get this stuff out of my tank. And you know, hopefully my master plan, if you wanna call it that. But you know, my master plans never end up being master anything, right? So either way, I'm gonna document this all the way through, share the results with you guys. And hopefully, you know, this will help someone. But at the end of the day, I got biopsies in my reef tank. I'm not happy about it, but we're going to keep it moving, keep it pushing, and see if we can defeat it. You know, one of the great things about documenting in this hobby, especially on YouTube, is being able to use your old videos to help diagnose, you know, current problems, or really to try to get a time window of when it began, you know what I'm saying? So in this situation, you know, I went all the way back to a video I made at the beginning of the year. If you guys remember it called uh, Defeating Hair Algae, you know, I was celebrating, you know, it was like Rocky on top of the hill, you know, hands up in the air. And in that video, there was a patch of really, really dark, tough looking algae on the top of my scape. And I mentioned it and I was like, it looks like turf algae. You don't know what it is. I disregarded it, plucked it out with my finger, you know, siphoned it out, kept it moving. Right. Well, months later, this is what it's pretty much turned into. So at that time, I actually had biopsies in my tank, didn't realize it. I don't know how it got in my tank. I'm assuming it snuck in on some kind of frag plug. That's pretty much my best idea, but it got in the tank. Now, as you can tell, it hasn't even taken over the whole tank. For the most part, I've only noticed it growing in the GSP. A few patches over, you know, different spots in the tank I was actually able to remove manually, and it hasn't came back. So either it grew back and then, you know, my cleanup crew ate it, or it just hasn't come back. So definitely a sign that my tank is not the absolute best place for this stuff to flourish. But, you know, the simple fact that it's starting to kind of get a little more aggressive with its growth and growing a little faster lets me know I got something out of whack. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as far as water chemistry wise, what I'm going to try to do about it. But for now, let's go ahead and pluck this stuff out of the tank because, you know, it's ugly, it's unsightly. And I only have a few hours before the GSP, you know, is going to open up and make it really difficult to kind of get out. So let's get to it. Now, believe me, you know, this is my first time really dealing with this stuff, so I'm not going to tell you exactly how you should do it but i'm going to explain at least why i'm doing it this way now ideally you know when you're trying to remove something from your tank at least for me i would rather do it outside of the tank meaning you know remove the rock clean it scrub it whatever you got to do outside of the tank to you know minimize any risk of this stuff spreading around now unfortunately you know as a lot of people may know this some scapes you just can't break apart easily or you have frags in place you know anemones attached different things that will prevent that so in this situation, decided to go ahead and pluck it out manually. You know, the key thing to remember, it's going to stick to your hands. So make sure you have some kind of, you know, bucket of water or something you can rinse your fingers off with every time you pluck it. You know, and keep on going about your business until you get as much off as you can. That's pretty much what I did. And I consider this phase one because this part of the rock work sticks out of the water. So everything that actually stays submerged, we're going to do it the, you know, siphon way. So let's go ahead and get to that next. Now, the ideal way of doing this will be to remove this entire rock from the tank, you know, remove the algae from it and put it back in. Now, that's the ideal way of doing it if you want to keep the rock. But honestly, if I had no corals on this rock work, 
and this was the only place that, you know, this algae was growing, I would just toss the whole rock and just be done with it. You know, that's the easiest way, just eliminate it all together. Now, unfortunately, I'm not that lucky. I got GSP growing on this rock. My enemies are attached to it. My devil's hand on the back side of it is actually encrusted on the rock, so I can't just simply yank this rock out without doing some damage to my cores. So, you know, option B is to manually remove it and siphon it out. Very important, you know, something I had to remember is to turn off all of my pumps in my tank. You know, my gyro is turned off, return pumps. Just imagine the gyro blowing this stuff as I'm trying to pluck it. I mean, that was just, it just wouldn't be smart, right? So I've done a lot of research on this and uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and go with the Tech M route and hopefully that will, you know, help raise the magnesium levels up and whatever that chemical is that's inside of that, that, you know, is supposed to starve the bryopsis out or stop it from, you know, using the nutrients in the water to, to keep to, to sustain itself or keep itself alive. That's the plan. You know, another part of my plan is going to be to recharge my Fosgard. Now, I didn't mention this to you guys, but, you know, I've had the algae scrubber in my tank. It's been running. It's been growing algae. But I really wanted to see what it was made of. So I haven't replaced the Fosgard for about two and a half or three months. And I've been my plan was to let the Fosgard pretty much, you know, exhaust itself to the point to where the algae scrubber was the only source of phosphate and nitrate removal from my tank. And I think doing so may have potentially, you know, gave this biopsis a little a little extra foothold. So definitely gonna recharge the Fosgard and hopefully, you know, strip all the extra nutrients from the water that it's using. You know, definitely pluck it out manually, raise them with magnesium. Hopefully those three steps will, you know, be the cure I need. So fingers crossed, biopsis, you know, day one, the battle has begun, right? So I'll keep you guys updated. Now, luckily, the bubble algae situation was a little different. You know, it's not attached to any rock work, just pretty much resting on the sand bed. And as you can see, just snatch it right out of the tank. So, you know, the plan is to eliminate any chance of spores or, you know, any bubble algae breaking loose and spreading throughout my tank. You know, at least that's the plan, right? So let me show you guys how I removed it from the coral. So keep in mind, you know, this is my first time dealing with bubble algae. So I was pretty, you know, I was pretty surprised on how tough this stuff actually was. You know, my original plan was to remove it, take a toothbrush and just brush it off, you know, keep it moving, throw it back in the tank. I quickly realized definitely wasn't going to work. So, you know, as you can tell, it's, it's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty hard struggle getting this stuff actually off the coral. And it was one point in time that I actually burst one of those bubbles and it shot fluid right at my face. So definitely wasn't prepared for that. You know, I didn't realize how much water was actually held inside of each bubble. And it was a quickly, uh, you know, a lesson I learned. So after a little struggling, you know, I was able to manually remove the larger pieces and whatever was left, you know, did my best to try to brush it off. It's not perfect. You know, I'm trying to be careful not to damage the coral. You know, this brain coral is mainly skeleton on the outside and tissue on the inside. So, you know, I'm just trying to be mindful of that. But, you know, do the best I can, rinse it off, and then I actually replace uh, this old water with fresh tank water, give it another quick rinse, and then back in the tank it goes. So definitely is a uh, unique experience, you know, my first time dealing with it. And I figured it was a good time to document, just in case anyone's new. You know, as I say before, hey, experienced people, this is nothing to you, but for me, Anything new I'm going to document because I like learning and you know, I like experiencing everything I can in the hobby. Avoiding the bad stuff if I can, but if I am going to deal with it, I'm going to document it, right? So I would say this process took me roughly, you know, 20 or 25 minutes. Definitely something that would have went a little faster if I wasn't recording, but that's what it's about. You know, document the hobby for yourself, for you guys. You know, my hope is look back on this video a few months from now and say, hey, that's when the problem started and I'm completely over it, done. And I can look back and reference this as my, you know, story of success, hopefully, right? <laughs> but as you can tell, you know, mission was accomplished. You know, all the biopsis is gone off the GSP, at least most of it, and from what I can see. And it was just in time because the GSP was just starting to open up. So I would say job well done. So for those of you all that are wondering, you know, just how much algae did you remove from your tank, CJ? Here it is. You know, this is gonna be the aftermath. This is gonna be the quote unquote dirty tank water that I removed during my water change. As you can tell, it doesn't look that dirty to me. Honestly, it's not that dirty with the exception of this algae floating around. So you know, I'm surprised about how much I actually removed from the GSP, which is kind of, kind of, you know, concerning, but you know, I'm gonna try to stay positive, show you guys the results. And we're gonna keep it moving. So this is what it looks like after the water change.
So as far as the rest of the roof tank goes, you know, besides being a little pissed off this morning because, you know, I just turned the lights on and did a water change, nothing's open, but trust me, cores are doing fine. With the exception of my A-can, it's actually getting harassed and stung by my purple torch. Somehow, those tentacles are fighting their way against the gyrus flow pattern and still stinging my A-can, so I'm going to have to remedy that. Probably move them to the right area and that barren um, pillar on the right. Maybe turn that into a little A-can guard. Who knows? You know, I'll keep you guys updated. Livestock, going to keep that the same until I get a chance to get to the LFS. No other changes there. But as far as new purchases, definitely going to put an order in for some new salt. Just ran out of reef crystals. Definitely going to put an order in for some new test kits. Probably salifert because I'm tired of API. I just can't get accurate results or consistent enough to where I can trust it. And then I'm also going to... Uh, get some tech m some kent marine or whatever that stuff is for the bryopsis so that's pretty much the latest on the reef tank i don't want to hold you guys up just you know give you guys a quick vid of you know how i'm going to fight this battle and hopefully hopefully this is the beginning of the end and i can get this stuff under control so as always hey you guys like comment subscribe you guys do what y'all do y'all be easy happy reefing